Every time I think I got this Spider-Man thing figured out, something goes wrong. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff Haynes, Senior Editor of Video Games at Common Sense Media, and I'm here today with a quick look at Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. It's a game that came out exclusively on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 on November 12th, 2020, and we thought we'd give you a quick look at some of the gameplay features, which was just one of the reasons why we decided to give it a Common Sense selection, because it's an excellent title, especially if you happen to have one of those two systems. Now, one of the things that we thought we'd uh, really talk about is the fact that this is a sequel to 2018. Marvel Spider-Man and it takes place only a few months after the events of that particular game in fact uh, this is initial uh, intro sequence right here kind of gives you a quick recap from Miles's perspective on the events of that first original game in 2018 as you learn Miles is a kid that was born in Brooklyn raised by his mom Rio who's a science teacher and his dad who happens to be a cop unfortunately his dad loses his life in the events of a ter terrorist attack uh, in the first game and unfortunately he finds his father's body, which really winds up uh, changing his perspective. Of course, that also winds up bringing him into uh, the orbit of Peter and his Aunt May, who happens to run uh, a feast shelter or a charity in New York City. Of course, thanks to that, that winds up bringing Miles into the orbit of Peter and May's life, and of course, he winds up discovering that Peter happens to be Spider-Man and tries to help him out. But of course, for his trouble, he winds up getting bitten by a spider and gets certain powers as well, just like Peter Parker does which means that Peter winds up taking him under his belt and kind of teaching him the ropes, as you will, of being a Spider-Man. So as we fast forward a little bit to this little sequence here, you have Miles and his best friend Genki, who happens to know Miles' secret as being uh, the other Spider-Man, or the second Spider-Man, if you will, uh, now that they've moved to Harlem. Uh, this little Harlem street fair, of course, is basically being run uh, around Christmas time, primarily because uh, Miles' uh, mom, Rio, has has decided to run for city council, not only as a way to effect change within her neighborhood, but also to keep a multinational corporation called Roxxon in check because they happen to be buying up and really kind of destroying elements of their neighborhood. It also winds up being really important because uh, this street fair highlights some of the elements of diversity within Spider-Man Miles Morales. There's a heavy focus on the Latinx, Black, uh, LGBTQ uh, community, as well as the hearing impaired community for certain characters within the game. In fact, at certain points, Miles interacts with some characters using sign language, which highlights not only how important the diversity of New York and of Harlem happens to be, but it also is really key to certain elements of the game itself. In fact, the tagline of Spider-Man Miles Morales is be greater, be yourself, which really kind of factors into not only embracing who you are, but also the people around you as, as part of your neighborhood. Um, which is very key and very vital. Now, what's also really notable is Miles is still the new superhero on the block. Nobody really respects him. And in many cases, as you see here, uh, even though Teo, the owner of this bodega, was asking for help and was calling for Spider-Man, he wasn't actually calling for Miles. He was calling for his cat, who he named after Peter. But of course, being that Miles happens to be a superhero, Teo has a hint about uh, some criminal activity that he heard might be going down at a nearby power plant, he has no idea what's going on. So he sends Miles at, off to see what's happening, and of course, on the journey there, while Miles winds up discovering that there are criminals that are trying to uh, basically take out the power plant so that they can perform a bank heist, he also finds Spider-Man the cat. So, of course, being a superhero, he basically rescues uh, the cat from these crooks and decides to bring uh, the cat back. That, of course, winds up playing up one of those elements of being a superhero, because it's not always the glamour of stopping these massive criminals or even uh, defeating supervillains like the Vulture or the Rhino, if, as you will. Uh, sometimes it's just doing good deeds for people in the neighborhood, and as you can see right here, uh, Miles is going to have a quick little interaction with Haley, who happens to be one of those hearing impaired uh, people that I mentioned a little while earlier. And of course, uh, the reward, as it were, for saving Spider-Man 
kind of says it all with Teo's reaction, of course, of getting his cat back. Now, one of the interesting things about this is that, of course, as he, as Miles winds up doing more and more good deeds in his neighborhood in, in Harlem, you start to see the people of Harlem really start to embrace him as their own superhero. In fact, at one pivotal point within the gameplay, you actually hear some of the characters of the neighborhood basically go, this is our Spider-Man, and that's really, really impressive in many ways. It's kind of the, the crescendo moment that you would have if, if this was a movie. Now, again, Miles is still new to the whole superhero thing, and in many ways, this is all his game. While Peter Parker has a little bit of a cameo here and there, he really steps back and really lets this become Miles' adventure. I'm not going to spoil exactly why uh, Peter doesn't really factor into this title that much, but it's important to know that uh, Peter really wants Miles to succeed, so he does something very important for him. He sets up uh, a, a training exercises as a gift to Miles to help him learn the ropes, or I guess the web strands, if you will, to being a superhero. Now, he has different uh, elements throughout the city, and it's based off of three different possible uh, categories that Miles needs to know to really become his own Spider-Man, which would be combat, stealth, and traversal. So, that gives Miles a sense of exactly uh, areas that he can basically practice and, and try out different moves and tactics without basically putting himself into danger. As you can see here, a lot of it is all holographic, it's all uh, fenced in, he learns exactly how to knock uh, enemies up in the air, but he'll also learn how to disarm them as, as a a way to set up combos or to uh, hamper the amount of damage that they can possibly do to himself or other people around. That's really important because uh, it, it actually speaks to some of the elements that, that are notable within the game. Combat is going to be a frequent aspect of, of the gameplay, of course, as being a superhero, you're going to be fighting villains or criminals. But there's no blood, there's no gore, it's all cartoonish or in some cases almost comic bookish, and so you really are focusing more on disarming, disabling people instead of killing them outright, even though the criminals are just trying to uh, eliminate you by any means necessary. As you can see, we'll move away from that training exercise into an actual crime that happens to be going on on the streets of New York. As you can see, these criminals have not only uh, tried to carjack this this poor person on, on the road, but they're also trying to take other cars as well so that they can perform other uh, criminal activities. Now, one of the things that happens as you're moving through the streets and you find these, uh, these moments just breaking out on the streets of the city, or you can defeat these uh, criminals in any way, and you actually have bonus objectives, which if you perform certain moves like you don't actually wind up getting uh, attacked or you don't let any anybody uh, escape the scene you get additional bonus points that you can use to acquire new skills or new new bonuses of course in this circumstance sometimes if you wind up uh, performing your your uh, combats uh, or your combat abilities too well some of the enemies will try to flee so that they can escape and try to cause mayhem somewhere else in the city of course as spider-man we really don't want that to happen so we're gonna chase that car down and if you've played 2018's Marvel spider-man you kind of know what the sequence is like you're basically trying to destroy arm some of the criminals that are inside so they don't shoot uh, pedestrians on the streets and then you're trying to take the car out so that it doesn't possibly run anybody over or run into a building cause any possible damage that way so we've managed to do that we've we've essentially uh, pacified the situation everything's okay um, but of course, that was just a, a low-level criminal, if you were. Those those kind of can pop up at any point in time, but every so often you might run into somebody that has a little bit more strength or a little bit more power. In fact, this is one of the uh, criminal organizations that you'll face off against within the game, and I'm not really going to go into a lot of the details about that because it has a massive connection to the plot, but it does uh, point out certain aspects of the game. Uh, Miles has specific abilities that are going to be a lot different than uh, Peter's abilities because he has bioelectric power so he'll do different things like uh, powerful punches or uh, dashes or in some cases have the ability to turn invisible all of which he calls his venom powers primarily because they sting whenever they uh, they land or they, they pack a punch that that really hurts uh, and so you can see here within these combat sequences that uh, Miles is really trying to incapacitate people and 
One of the interesting things about uh, Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales is, is that uh, the more that you wind up uh, in interrupting your opponents, you wind up making sh or landing strikes without getting hit yourself, you wind up building up a combo meter. And that combo meter can allow you to do a finisher which can be used to incapacitate your opponents. Of course, as you can see, they're trying to shoot you with uh, sniper rifles, they're trying to punch you with these oversized power uh, punching gloves, they're trying to throw grenades at you, things like that. Um, so if, if you're concerned about the possible violence, all you really need to know is in many cases uh, it's very cartoonish without being very uh, very strong or graphic. Uh, parents that might be also concerned about some of the other elements, of course you can always look at our content grid or on, on the review that we happen to have on Common Sense Media's website, uh, but there are some moments of uh, profanity within some, certain parts of the dialogue, just so you know. There are also some uh, conversations about uh, drug running and drug deals that happen to be going on by some criminals, uh, and of course Miles is going to do his best to try to stop them at those locations because of course he's a superhero and he wants to stop the criminals from doing anything illegal. So we're going to be coming up really much on the end of the game itself, but one of the things to kind of note is, of course, as you're just running through the streets trying to do things, there's a wide variety of, of tasks that you can do, whether it happens to be preventing uh, billboards from being taken over and broadcasting subversive messages, to uh, stopping helicopters from possibly uh, causing damage to the city, whether it's by firing guns or potentially crashing, even stopping criminals from performing uh, their deals or hijacking trucks for the feast charity but one thing that i thought would be really nice to close out on right here would be a kind of a feel-good moment which happens to be the statue of stan lee or stan the man who along with jack kirby had such a vital role in bringing spider-man the character to life and of course as miles basically being another spider-man it's only fitting that we kind of close out with him being right next to the statue here that's a really quick look at Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, as I mentioned, it's exclusive to the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. For more picks and advice on games to fit your family, make sure to visit us at commonsensemedia.org.